Once upon a time, there was a small robot dog with four legs. One day, this robot stood up and with full control over all his joints, he decided to start walking. The robot started to move each leg in a coordinated way and his body from one side to the other. But after a few seconds, he realized that walking wasn't so easy. His worst enemy, gravity, prevented him from being balanced and the small robot dog had the feeling that he was going to fall down. However, the small robot dog had a secret power and he could do something that the evil gravity didn't expect. He was using mathematics to predict the future, so he knew how gravity was going to affect him. In that way, the robot could anticipate how to move each of his legs to keep the balance and avoid falling, defeating the effect that gravity had on Today I'm gonna show you this robot dog, it's called Pavlov Mini and it's named after Ivan Pavlov which was a scientist that discovered the concept of conditioned learning in dogs which is a very important concept in psychology and neuroscience. And I am pretty happy with the results, it looks like it works pretty well, at least most of the times. I know I haven't uploaded any videos in a long time but I am planning to upload a series of videos explaining in detail how to build this robot and explaining how it works and this video is just to give a small introduction about the robot. This is a quadruped robot, meaning it has four legs and it is inspired by the mini cheetah robot from the MIT. This robot is open source and it was released in 2018. Since then, there are several companies and researchers developing new quadruped robots and new algorithms that make them move very dynamically. When I saw these robots, I wondered how do they work? What kind of algorithms do they use to make them work so stable? So I decided to build my own quadruped robot and learn on the way how these algorithms work. Pavlov Mini is a robot that I designed myself and it is built with chip components. It has a total of 12 motors and there are 3 in each leg. All the parts are made of PLA plastic that I printed with my 3D printer and it's not a very big robot. It weighs about 2 kilograms, it's 30 centimeters tall and it can work up to 30 minutes on a battery. By the way, this robot is not my first prototype. I started a few years ago to build a quadruped robot called Pavlov that was much bigger and was made of aluminum and strong motors. I think that project was a little bit too complicated for me at the time, so I decided to build a smaller robot which is easier. And that's how I got the idea of building Pavlov Mini. So I decided to use a small servo motors and I designed a few different robots, optimizing the size of the robot, the weight, the weight distribution, until I ended up with this design. So in a nutshell, how does this robot work? For example, in this video, the robot works with two diagonal legs at a time, supporting the weight. In this configuration, the robot tends to fall forward or backward, meaning that it is unstable. But nobody wants this to happen. Right? To tackle this problem, the robot has a sensor called IMU, which detects the acceleration and the angular velocity and estimates the orientation of the robot in real time. This sensor is connected to a mini computer called Raspberry Pi, which is located inside the body. 
This computer has a series of algorithms that I developed which predict how the feet of the robot should move to avoid falling. In this visualization, the red lines represent the direction where the feet should move next for the robot to be stable. The algorithms that predict these red lines are very similar to the ones used in the Mini Cheetah robot. I just adapted them to the type of motors I used. The robot has different gates, where the legs move in a coordinated way in a continuous loop. For example, using diagonal legs at a high base, or using diagonal legs at a lower pace or crawling, moving one foot at a time. This gait is more stable because the robot has at least three feet on the ground always. To control the movement of the robot, I use an Xbox controller that is connected to the mini computer using Bluetooth. This controller can change the gait of the robot, for example to crawling, or to use diagonal legs. Also, it can send velocity commands, for example to move forward at 10 cm per second or to rotate at 45 degrees per second. Or I can also lower the height of the robot while it is walking. And with all these commands, that I sent from the Xbox controller, the algorithms can compute how the feet must move so that the robot moves at the desired velocity. By the way, in all the videos I'm showing, the robot doesn't navigate autonomously, but I am the one controlling it with this Xbox controller. I want to show you now this video that I think is really funny where I tested how stable is the robot while walking when I put this small obstacle. These algorithms are integrated in ROS, which stands for Robot Operating System, and I will explain in future videos how it works. For now, I just want to say that ROS is a framework with a bunch of packages, and one of them is this tool to visualize the robot in real time. This visualization is wireless because the mini computer is connected to the internet and sends all the information to my other computer where I can visualize the state of the robot. But for me, the main advantage of using ROS is the ability to integrate this robot with packages for autonomous navigation, and this is something that I am planning to do in the future. I made this project open source, so if you are interested in building your own quadruped robot, I left a link in the description where you can download all the material 
including the files and the code to make it work, so check it out. As I said before, I am planning to upload a series of videos explaining how to build in detail this robot and explaining how it works, so if you are interested in understanding how quadruped robots work, or if you are interested in building your own, subscribe to my channel and keep track of future videos. Ah, and one last thing. I want to say that developing these kind of projects requires a lot of hours, as does creating all the videos explaining how everything works, so if you want to help me developing more projects like this and share them with you, you can go to my Patreon page down here and you can support my work there. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.